we now welcome on very special guests, Colin and Austin from the Kanga team. Did you, he did the like switch? I looked at you and said Colin, and then I looked over so, okay. and said Austin. We'll respond to either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just the Kanga guys. Yeah. So if you're not familiar, you'll show the, the cooler right here, but we have partnered with these guys before on two different designs. Yeah. Two different designs now. Third, so on order. Three. Yeah. On and, order. Income. In production. And yeah. Third will be coming in the fall. Um, so explain your product elevator pitch, which we'll get into in a minute, but you're obviously pretty, pretty good at, the, at this point. And there's a lot of customers that are listening that already have one of these. And there are some that probably don't right now at the time of recording, we do have like 50 left in the store. So perfect thing for summer. Perfect. I don't know when this podcast is going to be released, but this is the perfect item for summer. So Tell the customers listening at home a little bit about your product. Yeah, no, I sure will. And first, thank you guys for having us out here. We're from South Carolina, so it was a bit of a haul to get out here. And it's great to meet you both, face and names. And looking forward to hanging out with you guys today and tomorrow. And thank you to your listeners for anyone who has purchased yeah. a Kanga. That's awesome. If you've got it from Yee, that's even bonus. But essentially, He's such a politician. That was such a nice, <laughs> polite. Answer. He's already lobbying. Yeah, now <laughs> you see the hand motion. Someone, someone told me whenever you start a podcast, just you always got to be very grateful and, and thank. And so that's it's a good way. You're to, talking to, to the wrong guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially, what we have invented and patented is the world's first koozie for an entire case of beer, soda, or seltzer. So it's our mission and it's our life goal to eliminate the barrier between you and a good time. And a lot of times, ice big bulky coolers that gets in the way of that good time. So we took the concept of a koozie for a can and turned it into a koozie for the entire case. So we have a 12 pack, 24, 30 pack. Our 12 pack is our most popular because there are the most 12 pack uh, cans out there. And so, yeah, you just slide in a cold one, you zip it up, you open up the flap, tear a hole in the cardboard, grab a nice cold beer, no ice needed for up to seven hours. That's been third party tested. That's been personally tested. And uh, we use, Coors Light as a good example because it has the Blue Mountains mm -hmm. on it. And at 49 degrees, that's when the Coors Light can is no longer Blue Mountains. So it takes seven hours in most conditions, 70 to 80 degree weather, to go from 39 degrees, you know, ice cold, to 49 degrees where those Blue Mountains are no longer blue. So most people can finish a 12 pack of beverages in seven hours. So now here's always been my thing. I always say I don't need a koozie because it doesn't take me that long to finish a beer. Do you ever have people that say that? Which if you're saying I don't need a cooler because it doesn't take me that long to finish a 12 pack, you need to look into some help. But do you ever have people say that? Yeah, we do. We have people who they, it, it's very tough for them to grasp the, grasp the concept of an iceless cooler. That's like almost opposing words, right? right. A cooler you associate with ice, iceless doesn't go together. But you know, we still believe that there is a market for these big bulky coolers that are going to be used for camping and a long day of fishing 12 hours out there. But we want to be the ideal, ideal personal and now group cooler for those couple hours where you don't need that extra stop to buy a 10 pound bag of ice that you're only going to use 10% of it. Yeah. So we do, we get, we, there's always going to be opposing customers, but you know, as long as we find the small group that, that, that loves the concept, you know, you can still find success there. Why uh, Kanga? So it started as a class project and we were students at Clemson. Uh, part of the class project was to come up with a mascot for the project. We picked a kangaroo as a mascot because a kangaroo has a pouch and we associated the beer koozie, which is the product as a pouch for your beer. So kangaroo turned into Kanga and now all of the products have a kangaroo slash Australian theme to them. So this mm. is called the case mate. Uh, we have products called the pouch, the oh, Ruski, like that. a kangaroo ski. Yeah, what you guys have coming is the pouch. So We're I mean, not very smart here, if you haven't <laughs> realized yet. <laughs> no, nah, these are that's that's a very common question, but uh, that's that's how that got started. The professor ended up giving us a C. Colin, were you in that class on that project? I was not. I was uh, actually went to a different school than most of these guys. Yeah, we got Colin so. involved. Colin's been our longest standing employee nice. now almost three years coming up on three in september he's got a funny Crazy. story because he uh up and quit his kind of court not corporate but his startup software job in mm -hmm. new jersey right new york city actually new york yeah so i went to school in south carolina at Furman university and then my family's originally from uh new jersey so i went 
back up to the northeast to New York City for my first job, and then back down to South Carolina to work for Kanga. Mm. It was crazy because when he uh, when he showed up, we had never met him face to face. It was all just like phone calls and whatever. We make him this offer, which I think I just like pulled up a Word doc and like. Yeah, I, I just I've done that before, uh, <laughs> where you type in like uh, sample cover letter. Yep. I was like yeah, I'm just gonna pl- I'm just gonna plug in the, uh, in. the empty. Yeah. Type in a salary. I yeah. had no idea what. <laughs> well, yeah, you guys. I, I like hanging out with you guys because y'all are in a position kind of like us where we have no idea what we're doing. And, oh, you never do. Um, you guys yeah. are actually probably know what you're doing a lot more than us. They're like pretty legit with all the things that they do, like from a business like professional standpoint. But <laughs> you're just kind of our age, I and we've kind yeah. of gr- <laughs> we've kind of grown over the last few years and like kind of have like a similar lifespan and i don't know i just feel like we're to the point where if you want to hire someone you google how much that person should be paid and then you google how much their cover letter should say and what it should look like and then you send it back to them but we're making it up as we go baby you have to what do your parents think about that about you leaving your uh, corporate job in new york city to go work for a koozie uh cooler company they're they were supportive like right from the get-go you know i think that up until that point, I kind of had a track record of like finding cool opportunities and just going for it. When uh, the summer in between my junior year and senior year at Furman, I actually went uh, all the way out to Alaska to work for a brewery out there. And that nice. was just like an opportunity that I literally just Facebook messaged them. I was like, hey, I'm so-and-so. This is, you know, would o- I've always wanted to work for a brewery. Would love to come work for you guys. And uh, they're like, yeah, like we kind of have trouble getting people out to yeah, Alaska sure. to work. So absolutely, like, come work for us. And so, um, yeah, I think when I initially told them about leaving, I was, they also knew I was, like, very unhappy in New York City. So um, knowing that I was going to get out of New York City and I was, like, really, really stoked to go work with these guys, they were very, very supportive about it, So which I'm very thankful for. So thank you, Mom and Dad, if you're listening. You yeah. I think that's a cool lesson, the Alaska story, for people at home. Um, like Brian was just a simple little fan that DM'd us, and we gave him a job. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> yeah, I believe it for a second. No, but I think that is. I think that is cool. Like, I, I've heard of so many uh, funny stories about people delivering their resume in a cake or something like that to to a CEO. I, I think that we get we get this all the time. Y'all probably get it too. And I know y'all have like a ambassador program, and we have something similar. Ours is more very content mm-hmm. focused, where y'all have people like reps at at schools. But people will just say, hey, how do I be a part of it? It's like, well, I mean, think about and, – and, and they won't even say, hey, yee, yee, or yeah. hey, whatever. Like, if you're reaching out, do your research. Know – like, we put out enough content out there that if you really listen to our stuff, you know where our pain points are. You know where – we've talked o- very openly before about where we need to get better at or where we need to h- eventually hire. Mm-hmm. And so if anyone ever reaches out like that, it makes – I'm not saying we're going to hire someone, but it makes me at least think about it a little bit more. We talked about Clemson. I have a question. What's the question? Is this y'all's? Okay. So do you, know, do you know about this? Yes. Okay. That is that is. For, so for the listeners at home, I found a <laughs> picture of what looks to be a Kanga cooler, but it looks like you got it on Wish. Yeah, that's good. That's a good description of it. So uh, what that is is two years ago we did a licensing deal with a third party company oh. that says, hey, we own every NCAA, NFL, MLB, and NHL logo. It's gonna be very hard for you guys to go get all of those logos by yourselves as a very infant company. We still are, but two years ago, we right. were nothing. And, and for the listeners at home, you can't just slap the Dallas Cowboys logo yeah. <laughs> on, on something and sell it. You have to get yeah. licensing agreement, which is very, very hard as you can imagine. Yes, yeah, so people will come after you if you do that. Yeah. But, so they basically said, we will license your patent. We have a patent on this concept, a utility, a couple design patents, and said, we want to put every big school and professional team's logo on y'all's product, but it needs to retail for $20, and it needs to go into Walmart and Target. And so what we're thinking is, well, patents, are, you can get around patents, and we were thinking that they were going to do it regardless if we had said yes mm-hmm. or no. Mm-hmm. So we ended up going into a deal with them. Two years. It went mass market. We got a royalty off of that cooler when it was sold. But we were allowed to tell them whether or not we wanted our brand name on it. Did we want it to be called a Kanga cooler? Did we want them to be able to use as seen on Shark Tank? Did we want them to be able to use any of our marketing assets? And we said no because to retail something for $20 for our type of product, it's very cheap feeling. Mm-hmm. And we figured it would devalue the brand, sure. even if it had, you know, Texas A&M's logo on it. 
or you know Austin FC. So that agreement ended in January of this year, and we've been able to get quickly wow. like 15 collegiate licenses working on A&M right now. And, nice. uh, so what do you mean by devalue for those listening that may be confused by that? Yeah, so one, we never want to be sold in Walmart just because Walmart and, and Target and these stores are, they're great for uh, mass production, but that's what it is. It's a, it's a mass produced item and it, it doesn't have the same brand appeal if you're buying it off a Walmart shelf. It's also over and our it would be outpriced at Walmart. We have a somewhat of a premium priced soft cooler. Uh, it's still more affordable than others on the market, but there are certain places you don't want to be because they will make your brand look like it is cheaper than where it actually is. And so it was important for us to avoid associating the word Kanga with a Walmart or with a Target. Yeah. And you know, be very selective with where you know your shirts go. It'd be the same if there's like a bad representation of one of your customers who yeah. is, is wearing your shirt out in public, making a fool of themselves, you know, that doesn't represent, you know, what you maybe in a fun way. Sure. Yeah, 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 but yeah, no, you guys know saying. what I'm getting. There's at a there. difference between being a fun brand that doesn't take itself too seriously. And then being, being a brand that people associate with low quality. Yep. And it's like, what you're explaining is so interesting to me because you're explaining what someone, everybody subconsciously knows, but no one's ever heard someone formulate that. It may be new to hear that. Oh, when I go to a Walmart and I see a shirt that's sixteen ninety nine, my brain is gonna is going to assume that that's probably not the best quality based on the fact that there's tomatoes and you know two dollar like koozies next to it. I don't know. It's it's just like yeah. being in that environment. And or if I'm at a Bass Pro Shops or an REI or not that that's our market, but Bass Pro Shops more and it's twenty nine ninety nine. It changes your your subconscious, absolutely. Uh, the way that you approach that product, absolutely. And it's not an easy thing to formulate. Even then, I'm just trying to like put it into the right words. But that was well said what you yeah. what you said, Parker. But what's the what's the biggest brand that you've worked with so far? Like, is in, I mean, just everyone knows this brand. Probably Bud Light, Budweiser, Anheuser Busch. They were kind of the first. They just DM'd us on Instagram, said, "Hey, your coolers look awesome. You ever thought about putting a logo, specifically our logo, on them?" And at the time, we really hadn't, but it opened Did up. Did y'all freak out in the office? Oh my like, God, whoever's running the media was like, <laughs> look, look, look. Yeah, like, Bud Light just DM'd us on yeah. Instagram. It was crazy That's because cool. it, when we started it, we didn't have any money to put into it. We each put $833 into this business. Nice. Like, truly bootstrapped it. We won some, like, pitch competitions. Like, really tried to get as much, you know, a couple thousand dollars here, a couple thousand dollars here from certain contests. And so when Anheuser-Busch reached out to us and said, hey, we're interested in ordering a couple thousand coolers as opposed to the one-offs that we were, you know, we'd make 100, sell yeah, 100, right. make 100, sell 80, reorder, make another 100. And that model was not very scalable. Right. Um, but when they say, hey, we'll order 1,000, and it's our, got our logo on it, so we'll pay for it up front or at least 50% deposit up front, wow, there's cash flow. Now you have money coming into the business that you, that you can then use for e-commerce, wholesale, marketing initiatives, et cetera. And so... The custom business for us in year one was like 80% of our company. It was just like, it wasn't Kanga Coolers. It was us working with breweries and brands and right. whoever wanted to partner up on One this offs. concept. Yeah. And uh, now it's obvious, it's shifted and it's an e-commerce brand with those yeah. other components. But yeah. Cool. Colin, I, are you on marketing? So I work under Austin on the sales side. Okay. Actually solely focused on the full custom business. So okay. that's. I used to have my hand in wholesale yeah. and embroidery. We also have an embroidery business right. um, where companies and pretty much anybody can just embroider their logo on the flap of the cooler right here. But what I focus on now is the full customization of our case made and pouch coolers. I'd argue you have the, the coolest job. I think it's cool. You get to work I have with, a lot of fun. You get to work with all the brands. I know. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. That's literally like something that it hits me pretty much like every week that like I'm Kang is like main point of contact in between, you know, our business and then, you know, all these different brands, breweries, and uh, it's kind of crazy to think about the people mm -hmm. that, you know, this opportunity has introduced yeah. us to, you know? Like, it's kind of surreal that we're sitting right here. Well, you know? Colin, yeah. The so. downside to Colin's job is he has to deal with me. And, <laughs> no, uh, no, well, not funny at all. Is it, it comes across that you really do enjoy your job and you do care about it because yeah. I will take three weeks to reply and we'll have, like, a four-word answer because <laughs> sometimes I'm very lazy over email. Yeah, you so right. I don't do a lot you of, are. like, sensitivity words or like softening words i'll just be like colin i need a 
a cooler for this summer by yeah. this date. <laughs> yeah. And Colin will be like, good morning, Parker. How'd you <laughs> sleep last night, bro? I'm actually door dashing you some lunch right now. Did you want mayo on that? <laughs> I do like my best. So I do my best. Yeah. And I feel but so bad. What fires, me up, what fires me up more than about this job is that I love it when a brand like Yee Yee, and then there's actually another company based here in um, Austin, Texas called Cricket Shirts, which is like yeah, a retro yeah. golf lifestyle brand. And so, mm -hmm. you know, both these, both your companies are great examples of brands that have like adopted the concepts of either the case made and soon to be pouch cooler and have become wildly successful with it. And like, there's nothing else that fires me up more um, to see brands like Yee and Cricket do that. Um, and I get so much fulfillment out of that, that it just makes me realize that like I'm working yeah. mm -hmm. with the people I should be working with doing what I should be doing. So. It's also interesting because I feel like we've had like a friend to friend relationship since day one, but it's funny because you that not, not your direct to consumer. So not whenever someone is going onto your website and buying for everyone listening at home, but whenever they're doing wholesale, so they have to pitch this to us. We have to love the idea. Then we have to turn around and pitch it to our customers. And so mm -hmm. it's got to suck because y'all sometimes, because y'all probably have some vendors and you obviously you don't have to say names, but like, we get it, and I feel like we do a pretty good job of uh, whether it's through media or marketing or whatever, telling our customers this is how it works. But there's got to be times where y'all sell a, sell a product to a company, and then they just throw it on their store. And this isn't really an item like I can look at a hat and say, oh, I know exactly what yep. that does. This is something that there's education involved. And so if a company doesn't do it, then it can be tough. That has happened before where we'll sell somebody a full custom 12-pack case made, and then photos will show up online of a six-pack of cans halfway inserted yeah. and then it's a little bit of it doesn't a, work as good when you do that yeah. no yeah it's not how or it's supposed to be used yeah. so it's a little bit of a that's why the at least in my mind thing. whenever i see those pop up online i'm always on the phone or emailing yeah, yeah, yeah. somebody immediately immediately saying yeah. hey just you know probably best because what like you're running the risk of is somebody that like follows their brand seeing that photo buying the cooler using it with a six pack of drinks as yeah. opposed to a whole 12 pack having a bad experience and, and then it's a bad everyone. look for both the brand mm -hmm. right. and kanga you yeah. know so but by like marketing it appropriately, it's a good look for both the brand and Kanga. So yeah. everybody wins. Definitely. You've worked with Friday Beers. Mm. Okay. I have, and you may know more than this, and I've wanted to ask you for a long time, but I figured we'd have you on the podcast at some time. If you're listening at home, Friday Beers is an account that started like two years ago, focused on, you know, Friday, you, got, you finally get to have some beers, you know, you're off for the weekend, you know, whatever. They make hilarious content. I've got a stay woke on Friday Beers. I think that big beer is behind Friday beers. Big, okay. That's I, a very interesting take. And you don't have to tell <laughs> me, but I think because y'all are working with Bud Light, that that is telling <laughs> that Friday beers is run by one of the big beer companies because that account has exploded yeah. like no one else. And I think that at some point, I'm not saying it started off. Well, maybe it did start off as beer company telling like four 25 year olds, like go run this, have fun with it. Here's a budget. But it's just the way that that account exploded, the content's too good to not be to not be run by Big Beer. So It's a great take. I don't know for a fact that that's not the case. I do know that they work very closely with Big Beer brands, and okay. they have certain levels of endorsements. They are actually Ivy, three Ivy League brothers, yeah. all who graduated from different Ivy League schools that were all studying to be comedians. What? So <laughs> so. what a weird i would not trust anyone <laughs> what a niche. i would not trust them at all no. if you told me that <laughs> they're they're really just witty funny guys and uh it's been cool what yeah to see an account explode like that y'all's has done you know very similar levels yeah. of growth yeah uh over a short period of That's time so but funny. yeah I, when they told me that they were like one went to harvard and one went to Princeton, Dartmouth. and one went to Dartmouth. Dartmouth, yeah, yeah. And it was like, really? Like, I asked you what your parents like, thought. Imagine what their parents think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just uh, like Gandalf, like lifting his staff to like some like ad lib over yeah. it. Yeah. So confusing yeah. to like boomers. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, we're going to go to break real quick. When we get back, we're going to talk about Shark Tank. All right, before we talk about Shark Tank, which you guys were on, what do you have in the Kinga Yee cooler over there? I've, been, I've been thinking about it. Well, this is my first time on Texas soil, so we thought when in Texas, you have to have either Shiner or a Lone Star, and we took a wild gamble that you guys are Lone Star guys. I am. And uh, so I guess we'll, we'll Yeah, pass don't be out. rude. At least, at least offer. Absolutely. I would, yeah, I would love one. 
Are you a trying shiner? to maneuver around Would you this? Consider a shiner or a Lone Star? Guy? I used to be a Shiner guy, and I got burnt out on him. I still like him, but I'm more of a Lone Star guy. Come on, Frost. What are we doing here? I'm trying to reach around this they, mic. They here. make some serious cardboard in Texas. It sounds like. Hey, Try not to touch this mic. Yeah. It is. Can we offer for the, yeah for the crew? You want one? Sure. There we go. There we go. These were bought what two hours ago, so they're still frosty. What I was gonna yeah. say earlier, not to get too much back on the product, but what I've noticed because first thing I did because uh, hand up, I am the drinker in the office. Uh, first <laughs> thing, first thing we did, he said, "Go test the product this weekend." I was like, "Sir, yes, yep. sir." So this is before we ever started working together, and I went to the pool, hot summer day, and I was out there for three hours. Not <clears> much, <throat> but it's honest work. It's not much, but it's honest work. <laughs> product, but I will be the product tester for yes. this one. Uh, and, it, and it was great for three hours, you know, in the hot Texas sun on concrete. I Definitely. probably wouldn't want to do it too much longer. But then what I love it for is when you go over to someone's house. I did this at one of our employees the other day. He had a get together and we went over there and there's like 50 people and the refrigerator's full. There's nowhere to put your stuff. And I just, I had my Kanga and I was like, boom, put it on the counter and just yep. grab from it. It was perfect because it's room temperature inside but the right. kanga was great you don't have to move over your friends like guacamole yeah. and yeah, exactly. two percent milk and knock over yeah knock <laughs> over the homemade dip that she, yes. his wife made and piss yes, her off just, yeah that's exactly. funny i have a, a quick question for you guys for for ye day what what type of advice would you give to a first timers one who's never been to texas one who fractured a heel on uh their first time visiting the the ye farm in ye day yeah, so this this episode will obviously come out after Yi Yi Day. We don't know when, so all of our listeners will have seen all, all everything, everything from that the day. Had happened. Yeah. So, what I would say, oh man, do you have any advice? Wow, the listeners know and we don't. I wonder what happens. <laughs> <laughs> How was it, y'all? It'll just be a great before and after video. Yeah, well, of you. Yeah, I would yeah. say um, I have a feeling someone's gonna roll their truck. Uh, do you remember okay. that dude at Yi Day? That guy that rolled his truck. It was crazy. They y'all saw it listening at home. Y'all saw it. <laughs> Let's hope that doesn't happen. We'll have a, a double heel fracture. That's what I'm thinking is going to happen. Um, I'd You're say gonna fracture your other heel. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yes. Two boots. The goal is let's get Two Austin boots. out of here in a wheelchair. Yes. yes. LeBron James. Then keep <laughs> keep your distance from the mudding. Um, either be in a truck, but don't be in the way. So we have um, a rental truck. Do you guys know the policy of returning a rental truck destroyed? Yeah. Is that I did pay for the insurance, the one that covers the truck and the the person that the oh truck yeah you're hits. good you're good you should it's be a, fine so it's a Tacoma right you no what was it Canyon Canyon Canyon, Canyon. oh yeah well, we're gonna tear that up yeah so you should try to drive through the lake okay in it and then Wait, when we go to the airport we'll just we'll just tell them where the <laughs> truck is we'll just truck. give them the coordinates and be like it's there <laughs> just drop the coordinates <laughs> someone's gonna have to pick it up yeah, yeah. did yeah. you hear about the guy last year that drove into our pond we watched the video yeah. that was uh, pretty savage just yeah. tell them all the views that video is gonna get and just say you're welcome for the advertising keys are in it. I like it. I like it, guys. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. It's it's unlike it's so funny because Yi Day is unlike every single day out here. Like it is. That's whenever I love people coming out here. But our customers sometimes, most of them understand. But sometimes people say, "Man, I I love to work where y'all work and just do all the that crazy stuff." Sure, we have the opportunity to, which we probably take for granted a little bit. But most days, like we actually get stuff done out yeah. here. You know, it's kind of crazy. And people probably think that about y'all. They see your <laughs> funny TikToks and they're like, oh man, that looks awesome. I wish I worked there and my job didn't suck. It's like, well, we it's not always a like this. breakfast beers concept about a year and a half ago. Totally a skit. We never drink beer for breakfast, but it's gone to the point where some of our customers and licensing directors are, someone sent an email out to like every SEC, ACC licensing like director and was like, hey, want to tell you all about King Coolers. I love them. You know, don't take their social media super like truthful because they're not they're they're way more mature than they look. And I read that I was like, man, these people actually think the breakfast yeah. beer skit is real. Yeah. How do they not see the satire? But we need to do a better job. It either needs to be way more like satirical or we need to cut it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> honey nut so. beer is. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about Shark Tank. So you guys were on Shark Tank. Uh, sum up that exp obviously, like just asking you to sum up that experience. There's so much to it, but. Like what, what did that look like? How did that move the, the needle for your business? How long has it been? First of all, since you were on shark tank about three years since April. So okay. just over three years. So obviously like, is that the turning point for your business? Probably it was because when we went on the show, it was an infant company. It was just a class project and y'all probably had no money, nothing. Yeah. We had no money. We had no sales. We had a hundred thousand dollars in sales that we 
Most of it was Anheuser-Busch and all those other companies and 30000 from and a friends Kickstarter. friends and family, yeah. Very minimal. We thought we were, like, too soon to go on the show. But when that opportunity – when they're like, hey, guys, you've made it to the final round. It's time to fly out to L.A. and film. It's very hard to say, well, we're going to wait till next year. Yeah, you can't. Although I wish you could have because things would have gone probably in, a, in more of our favor, which mm-hmm. it did. It, we ended up getting a deal. But with just who? The, with Mark, Mark yep. Cuban. And it was $100,000 for 20% of the company. And <laughs> – it was funny because he you can't uh, ever say like we I wish we weren't in bed with Mark Cuban, but I mean, dang it. Yeah, I know what you're saying. A year from then, your sales would have probably been. <laughs> so what does that mean for those listening? Hundred thousand dollars for 20 percent of the company. So when an investor comes in and they are they own 20 percent, whether we do a distribution at the end of the year, he takes advantage of shareholder distributions or if the company is ever acquired, then he would take advantage of an acquisition. Um, there's access to capital and other valuable benefits yep. about you know partnering with the shark but the real value comes from the tv show at the yeah, end of the of day course. like abc puts on a great tv show and huge it's gotten huge it's in its second decade yeah I mean, it's been around for like 12 years i didn't realize that. i grew up on it like it was literally the reason i like didn't do engineering and pursued entrepreneurship was because of the show and i you know there's a company in austin beatbox beverages oh, I yeah. watched them i know on, those guys watched them on tv just and amy and brad worked for them for two years after college and uh, it's just an inspiring show for like someone, a college kid sitting on the couch on Friday afternoon. Like, yeah. all right, well, let's learn a little bit about. What- was that the scariest moment of your life, or was it? Were you in the moment? Were you strangely calm? We were strangely calm because the week before we gathered five of the most successful upstate South Carolina business professionals and asked them to sit on a panel and rip us to pieces, and they did. They mm. tore us apart under camera for about 90 minutes. Ooh. Every question we asked, they had 10 questions back that were, nah, you shouldn't say that. That's wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. What about this? Like they pushed us to our limits. It was very difficult. We left there like, I don't think we're going to be successful in yep. like Shark Tank. Like that was tough. Is that really how it's going to go? We got in there into the tank. We passed out beers. Everyone cracked one. Mark probably sucked down three in 20 minutes. <laughs> and that helped with the. What a speed guy. to the you know to the offer and he was the only one to offer no one else had like even said that they were in or out but mark did one of those like you let me know now or i'm yeah. taking it away uh, yeah no negotiation and i look back i'm like man it would have been fun just to, like poke at him and been like dude how are, no negotiation there's no fun in that but in the moment it just felt right to you know stood up on a cooler elevated surfaces all that good stuff yeah. and we accepted the deal and uh it, it it does help the business it definitely puts you on in front of eyeballs that be very difficult to get in front of otherwise what else it helps you with is opening up doors like some of our brands that we work with they're super fans of shark tank so they may have never heard of us unless it was from that show or ace hardware our biggest retailer the buyer she loves shark tank so that that getting that meeting may not have happened as soon as it happened without that so what we're trying to do though is we know we don't want to be kanga coolers a shark tank brand right we want to be kanga coolers an awesome cooler company that three years ago just happen to walk on. You, you know, don't necessarily want to be in the as seen on yep. TV aisle exactly. five years from now. Definitely yeah. not. Don't want to be defined by yeah. a singular moment like that. So was Cuban, was Cuban who you wanted the most? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, who did you want the least, and why was it Kevin O'Leary? <laughs> <laughs> he 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 was poking at us too, and I had to poke back. Oh, you d- you don't you don't say. <laughs> yeah, we I called him bald twice, not on script, and he <laughs> rolled with it. I think we were just being goofballs. We you know we're wearing kangaroo suits. Yeah. One of our guys did a backflip. That kind of stuff just like mm-hmm. lightened the mood of it. That's great. What was crazy is when we were sitting, it's in a warehouse. It's where they film like the Avengers and stuff. And when we were sitting in like the waiting room to go up next, there's a company in there that was getting ripped to pieces by all the sharks. They went in asking for. Wait, could you hear it? Or how you did could you hear know? it? Because you're in, a, you're in a warehouse. So the waiting oh. room isn't really a waiting room. It's a curtain. Oh. So you could even like peek and see like. And these are great guys, and I'm not going to name them because I really like them and their product. Did they make the show? They did not air. Okay. And they went in asking for like a million and a half dollars for like 2.4% oh, equity come on. and just offended them. Yeah. They had, they had $10 million in sales in their like two years uh, of being a business, and it was good for them. But just the way that they, they offended the sharks and they, <laughs> Kevin was getting. So we thought they were going to be pissed off yeah. walking into that environment. Well, I think uh, that a lot of people wa- go on to the show for different reasons. Mm-hmm. I think there's d- certainly companies that go on. It, it's it's always an added bonus to get that viewership, but then a lot of companies go on and they're like, we don't really want to make a deal. Yep. We just want to get the viewership. Yep. Which is Or worst case scenario, they're just offended and they don't even air it. So then that's just worst, worst case scenario. Yep. 
that's a scary place to be if you, cause you spend a lot of time it's about a year process from like audition to oh yeah it airing i figured and so if you took all that time not spending on your business and growing your business like we did had our episode not aired like i don't know kanga coolers would not be the kanga coolers that it is right sure. now sure uh do you have a direct line to mark cuban there is there's emails and phone number but you know the 250 companies he owns just from the show so the, like i said the, the value is isn't actually like the reruns we get a monthly rerun which is kind of crazy so it's on yeah, cbc that and before uh, that was my next question do you see a huge spike in sales whenever you have a rerun it's not quite the same as like the initial airing sure but it definitely brings more people into the funnel into the into the environment social media gets a boost so you don't get so. like mark's cell phone number afterwards and he just not like necessarily because he's got a whole he's got teams for this right which is who i mean i love mark cuban uh mavericks are advancing tonight by the way i'm calling it right now <laughs> this this episode may air after the finals they're not going to win the finals but they are advancing tonight in the first round um the the value actually i just forgot what i was saying with that because i just got just thinking about basketball this is if, how my mind works <laughs> all i think about is sports yeah that's good do what yeah. yeah. Oh, he's got oh. a team. He's got. Well, I, I think uh, you can edit that, or you don't have to. I mean, hopefully the listeners hear once again how dumb I am. Uh, you don't really want to work with Mark Cuban because he's the head of everything. You want to work with because you you know who Mark Cuban hires really good people at their job, and sure. so you want to be working with those people because they're the ones in the weeds that know what they're doing. You know, it's like uh, I mean, not not as much because we're small, but like I mean, there people will walk up to Granger and ask him about a hat that we just released. It's like, well, Granger has people for that. Like, yep. and, and he, he is in the loop, but like, we're the ones carrying it out. Like M Parker's uh, developing the product and then I'm marketing it, marketing it. And then Ben's helping with social media and Brian's helping with all the video work. Like Granger's not going to go that know the ins and outs of every single right. little thing. And like when this hat is launching, like the value that someone like that brings is it's Mark Cuban. It's yep. Granger Smith. So. That's well said. This question on the notes just says, how much money do you have in your bank account right now? <laughs> <laughs> it says RN. I was going to scan over that one. I was, I was going to see if... Is some that your question? question? Yeah. Dogecoin? Yeah. How much so Dogecoin? much Doge, Dogecoin? Yeah. God, I mean, tons of Doge. Yeah. Well, yeah. So we do this, we do this yeah. thing with, uh, with... I do this thing with uh, like celebrities or singers or whatever. Like Anyone that people Google their name, not the company name, like their name... Uh, there's always I say this is questions that Google asks, not that I'm asking. Right. And there's always one that is how much money does this person make? So then I was I'm probably gonna ask our the person we're interviewing later. Uh, how and much what money their do you net have? worth is? Yeah, your net, what's your net worth? I how read that you could literally just go in and if you wrote one article that said you're worth 50 million, that's probably where they're gonna pull it from. Brian, so write, that, say, Brian write that down. <laughs> write that down. <laughs> but now we we don't have a lot of money. We're we're still bootstrapping the whole thing. I mean, it's still it's still lean, mean, you know, and. Fortunately, we have AC and heat now in our office warehouse, but we didn't have that luxury a year that and a half summer. ago. Yeah. It's incredible, right? It's insane. It's yeah, Texas. you forget how much <laughs> you love a good air conditioning system and a bathroom that has running water and all that good stuff. Yeah. But So we were talking about this earlier. So you got engaged in the last year, correct? Yep. Okay, congratulations Thank on you. that. When was that? That was in November. Okay. Were you more nervous for Shark Tank or to propose? Proposal, really? for sure. Yeah, definitely. Did did you did you at any point think you're gonna throw up? Because some you look like a guy that might throw up a lot. I've gotten that Whoa. before. Yeah, really? I've gotten that before. You just really? look yeah. you just look like a guy that soft. throws up when that you're calling him soft. Yeah, that that was that was no. a moment that could have been you know too big and like I heard you talking about yours. Like you know she's gonna say yes, but yeah. it's still like you know and asking the parents that's yeah. like that is tough. You know <laughs> we have a couple guys in the office. Uh, not gonna name names. No one is in here, but they're in that same. It seems like the team's growing up. I mean, just three four years yeah. ago when this thing was getting started, it was really like we're just partying and you know yeah. growing the business whatever and now it's like is someone buying a house is someone getting proposed to yeah. and honeymoon bachelor party all that stuff it's like weird seeing the guys and then we have the new wave of people we right. you know employ who are fresh out of college 21 yeah. 22 and they call me a boomer i'm like guys a yeah. boomer. <laughs> <laughs> like i'm 27 give me a break <laughs> like billy matt it's funny that that, this. that that just happened because uh we had he'll be here tomorrow at Yee Day, but Gatlin Didier, uh, he's a content creator. He's one. He's become one of our really great friends, and we did a uh, we did a piece of content with him. And at towards the end of the content, I was over at we were just dating at the time, mm -hmm. my fiance, but we were just dating at the time. And he was like, Hayden, it's getting kind of time for you. And I was like, Hey, and we're done. We're out of time. Like, shut up, dude. <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> she's in the other room. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> like, can you chill? That's awesome. I have a quick. Uh, I consider you guys both to be entrepreneurs. One of the questions I like to ask 
the people interviewing on these sure. podcasts is what your lemonade stand story was. Like, what was the thing when you got, were growing up that kind of like sparked your interest in entrepreneurship or, you know, a lot of kids grow up with a lemonade stand, 25 cents, they collect it, they sell it. That's when they're like, they learn about selling, receiving money, saving money. Do you guys have a interesting take on that? I never did. I was never naturally an entrepreneur. I got a D in my entrepreneurship class in college. Didn't have a cool class project or anything. Uh, I was going to go do uh, residential real estate with okay. the team that I interned with in Austin. And uh, looking back, it was just totally a God thing. But I, at the last minute, was like, I feel like I'm not supposed to do this. I don't want to do this anymore. Granger's career was growing a lot at the time. And I felt like I had a emotional intelligence a business not a business savvy i didn't know anything about business but i knew i knew our, his customer i knew what they would like and i had a standard for mm -hmm. a quality of a product and then i knew how to market it in an interesting way and it's just literally awesome. evolved from those two simple ideas just create an interesting product market it in an interesting way get it to them in a timely fashion and it's just grown mm -hmm. from there but i never was like like some of our, like one of our buddies, Connor was always buying and selling, just doing random bootstrap stuff to make money on the side and mowing lawns. You move mowing mowed lawns. lawns. Yeah. Yeah. I mowed lawns all through yeah. high school too. What about you? Uh, I used to make mixtapes in like fourth grade. I cool. destroyed the family computer with LimeWire and <laughs> I would download songs. I would you. take, I would, I would go buy, my parents would help me buy stacks of CDs yep. and I would ask people at school what songs they wanted and the next day i would bring them a cd of that and then that's awesome mine's always been kind of music or sports oriented like i did baseball cards and stuff growing up but uh whenever i got in college and the first time i was really subjected to the music industry which this is now much more e-commerce but it's still at a music company that's headed by a country music artist granger and everything but uh, I, we had a thing, shout out to my buddy Harrison. I haven't talked to him forever, but he started a company and brought me on and it was called Hayes music group. And it was, uh, it was, we worked with fraternities so you can figure yep. out where the Hayes <laughs> comes from. And <laughs> what we would do is we just realized that there were all these fraternities that were booking shows and booking artists and just getting completely ripped off. And he's always been an entrepreneur and he knew more than I did, but he brought me on and then we would do shows. So say like Riff Raff was big at the time, rapper, yep. look, look him up or don't look him up if you're listening <laughs> at home. He's terrible. Uh, we would, we would, but we, we would hear that Riff Raff was like charging one fraternity, like 15 K to come play a show. And then another one, like six K. Mm -hmm. And so Harrison's worked with They're him multiple times. So yeah. So we would book, we would literally tell the fraternity, Hey, this is how much we're going to pay him. It's going to be much less than what you could get him at because we've worked with him before. Yeah. So instead of the, instead of Riff Raff's team quoting them, 15k and just seeing if they do it or not we would say hey riffraff we're going to offer you 5k we would upsell to the fraternity for 10k total we make 5k but then we manage all of it because these there's a like what people don't realize too is that uh artists require a lot you know like we're we're granger's very easy to work with but i've worked with divas before yep. we, we've had been on tour with divas or like played a festival like there's they're in every industry rap country rock they need every you know, liquor flavor exactly. and, and then platter. they leave it all in the green room and they don't even touch it and you're like i wasted money on this or they take one shot of it and it's done mm -hmm. so we were like hey we'll manage all of that and so that's how i got started it was mainly rappers because yeah. it was like fraternity that's what they did that's but cool i don't think i've ever shared that on the on the podcast that's awesome but yeah it's something that's kind of how i got started and then i've been basically music ever since so it's very cool all right i've got a few ideas let me pitch you I cannot believe that you guys have not done lunch boxes. I use my Kanga cooler as a lunch box every day, and I know I'm not supposed to, but I leave the house and I go to the gym. So for like 45 minutes to an hour, it's sitting in my vehicle, mm. and then I go to the farm. There's like l lunch boxes out there, but I don't really like them and they don't look cool. So I use my Kanga every day. And I know that the point of the Kanga is for there not to be any air in there, but it's perfect for like the little hour that I go. So something maybe. What you guys have coming. We have a lot of people. And that was another reason that the pouch was designed the way it was designed. And, it tell, can, and tell the listeners about the pouch. Yeah. So the pouch is the same concept of the 12 pack casemate, but it's a top loader instead of a side loader. So it is a waterproof liner. Mm. If you want to throw six beers, two bottles of water, a Gatorade, handful of ice, 
it will retain ice, whereas these are just sleeves yeah. meant to keep cold things cold. Right. We have a lot of people with the top loader who do use it as a lunchbox, and that one does it doesn't bother us at all. It, it, it is it'll hold its shape. This one, when you don't have the twelve pack in it, it just looks floppy and it doesn't look like yeah, it yeah, was designed. Yeah. But that was a, an inspiration for designing that product okay. the way it was, okay. was, was food. It's still gonna, a beer cooler, but yeah, I'm going to use mine for that then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Other idea, actual kangaroo rentals. Okay. You guys can make a killing if you had, if you bought like three kangaroos, let them live at the warehouse yep. for content. And then you rented them out in the greater South Carolina area. I'm actually fairly confident and sure that it's actually legal to legal own. It South is. Carolina. A kangaroo. I've been around a kangaroo South before. Carolina. Yeah, you it's, can. Yeah. Wait, I know I, that I know that Texas is cool, but ask him about the tiger. We were just talking about the tiger. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We were like swapping <laughs> facts about Texas on the way here. The one the that I brought up classic. is the, <laughs> the classic is the fact that there's more tigers in captivity in the state of Texas than there are in the wild. Is that true? It's got to be. And don't don't get me started on zoos. Is there a I'm tiger? Not a, I'm not a hippie, but I think zoos are so messed up. No, but in in private captivity. Yeah, like right? private pets. Yeah. Like, well, those are the worst ones. Those are worse than zoos. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We thought there was gonna be a tiger here. Yeah, we weren't no, sure. Yeah, the yeah. Down, tiger. Down, down the road, Mrs. Jones owns one. Oh yeah. When you guys get <laughs> the a coyote, tiger, we'll yeah. Get it. Yeah. 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 yeah, the coyote. The coyote. Yeah. yeah. Hayden, so. Hayden does have a verbal agreement with Granger and Tyler that once Yee Apparel reaches a million followers on Instagram, we can get a camel. Wow. Yeah. Wow. There's this, and y'all are very close to that. That could happen in, in a couple yeah, months. Yeah. Yeah. We're at like a little over seven hundred. What is the camel desire? What What is? There's not. There's okay. Not. There's just, no reason. They're just cool. Camels are not good for anything. They're expensive, uh, and they're high maintenance. But I just want one mm -hmm. just to have it, and we. So we already have people listening because this will happen. We'll talk about some idea, and then someone will try to go grab the username. Uh, if you're listening at home, we already have yeecamel.com and we already have at yeecamel Instagram. <laughs> so it's just waiting. Kanga Kanga. Kanga Kangaroo. <laughs> yeah, you, you better get it. Get it, get it now. This airs. King of Kangaroo. Cut that. Yeah. Just, yeah and so I will funny. say, though, I, uh, there was a guy at college freshman year that had a kangaroo, which wildly terrible idea for a 18 year old in a dorm. I guess he lived in a house, but crazy idea. But I've heard that they're high maintenance. Yeah. Man, can you imagine? Like, you think girls love you when you have a puppy? If you had a kangaroo. Kangaroo. Yeah. yeah. That's that's crazy. I'm pretty sure they're they're very violent as well. I, How yeah. much equity in the Have kangaroo, kangaroo do you Jack? need? If because you're pitching this stuff, right? So you also need yeah. You're, no, no, I want I want nothing no, to do you with want that. No yeah, Maybe yeah, yeah. I want zero percent for zero. We need the yee -ye camel and the kanga kangaroo. No, nope, stop. Don't say they can meet. Yeah, yeah. They, they can meet. Pete, yeah, Pete is gonna come after us for they sure. They can meet. Yeah. We can put them in a pen for about mm. a week. See what happens. Yeah. <laughs> so. We'll have our own animal kingdom. Yeah. Two thousand dollars see camels more expensive than that. So yeah. two thousand dollars for a That's kangaroo. Wild. You just found that on eBay or what did you look at? Uh, just Google how much expensive. That's crazy. Okay, next one. This is these this is whenever my list starts to really fall off. Uh, if they, they didn't fall yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. If, if those <laughs> other two weren't terrible enough, uh gloves that have a koozie it, it's a glove koozie. So, like, you can't do anything else with it. You've got to hold the beer. But it's just all time. It's built like a glove with a koozie with y'all's yeah. material. Uh, now that I'm saying this out loud, y'all keep things cool. So you don't want your hand to be cool. But we can figure that out later. No. We That's talked about this yesterday. <laughs> we were at Top Golf yesterday, and one of our guys, Breck, it's kind of like a hard move to wear a glove to Top Golf. <laughs> yeah. And, and bring your clubs. I'm just going to say that. He, yeah. he, I don't, what a guy. Yeah. Well, his name's Breck. So. Yeah, Breck. Yeah, Breck. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like he, a Breck. He wore his glove there. and he ordered like a can, a can drink instead of like the pitcher, which is normally like the most efficient and cheap way to order beer at Top Golf. But he had the glove on and I was like, dude, what about, what if that was a koozie? Like, that's not the worst idea ever. So. Wow. It could actually be, the more I think about it, it could, it could just have Velcro. Because right. I was thinking about this the other day at a show. I was at a concert, and yeah, I can't put it down like a, a, a GA standing. So right. I don't have like a, it's not seats. I don't have anything to put it in. But I was like, man, if I could just let my hand be free right now, <laughs> this would be perfect with Velcro. We have, a, so. we have a finger strap built on, you know, on the back of phone cases, there's like finger straps? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of our koozies have finger straps built onto the oh, side. Oh, yes, I know. And that's why I use it sometimes. And so. Yeah, because I've got y'all's. Yeah, Just grab some there. Yeah, there you go. Does well, anybody need USA another beer? One? Yeah, I'll have another beer. You need another one? Yes. <laughs> Let's go. Break them out. There we go. Yeah. No, that that. What do you mean that was going off the wire there? That was a that was a phenomenal Maybe idea. Maybe I should right have there. led with that. <laughs> okay, my other idea. Anyone else? Great talking stuff for sure. Here we go. Well, frisbee action. Uh -oh. Did I just lose it? Okay. Oh, you got good. it. 
Thank you. No, that's a, um, that's a phenomenal idea. Other idea, you kind of missed the boat on this, but at the start of COVID, if y'all would have made, because COVID went, started in March, then went through the summer months, and then it got cold. And all of a sudden, you have to wear a mask in a place where it's cold outside. Well, you shouldn't have been wearing one outside, but it's cold. If y'all would have had a, co- a COVID mask <laughs> that kept you warm, I didn't see anyone do it. Yeah. Wow. It's like the opposite Gosh, of yeah. y'all's technology, yes, yes. but, you know. Invert it, but for, <laughs> yeah. okay, okay. I feel like you have to incorporate beer somehow. Somehow, some way, yeah. it all has to come back to. That's that's the kind of the core yeah. of it yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. But. Okay, last one. Okay, this one actually may be good. You don't have to do it in Georgetown, but, like, if you go into Whole Foods, they make uh, in Austin or, like, a more of a hippie-type place or just a hippie city. They make you, uh, you you have to pay for bags, and they never do plastic. It's always the recycled. So a lot of people will have the reusable, like, mm-hmm. Whole Foods ones that they walk around with. If y'all had a deal with Whole Foods to make, like, a product that is that, is that that could be awesome. It's insulated. just a bag that's insulated with y'all's right. technology. You'd have to change a little bit because obviously that's made for airtight. But I was thinking about this actually on the way here because every time we go to the grocery store, we just use those now because we've already got it. Yep. I was like, man, this would be awesome if Kenga had like a deal with a massive retailer. A large scale vision for us for sure would be if every case of beer that you're buying in a grocery or convenience store, it had a sleeve built on the outside so that you could just go to the party with it and you never had to worry about icing it down and it would keep that cold for the extended period of time the three to five hours that you you really need it that's big big vision and the cost would have to be very low but yeah Yeah. a couple of the breweries that we've already started working with uh one of which is oscar blues which i'm pretty sure has a location here in Mm. texas somewhere houston okay maybe houston um but they created a full custom 12 pack casemate and then they distributed them between their like four or five tap rooms that they have kind of located all around the country and then they had a to-go beer program where if you came into the tap room bought a 12 pack um bought a casemate and then brought the casemate back you could get a discount oh. um, so, so incremental yeah. revenue for that. a couple of bre- couple breweries smart. have done that yeah That's um, smart. so yeah kind of like the same concept there yeah but uh yeah we love it's really really cool to see like all the different ways that breweries in particular are using these yeah that's so. cool. Parker, do you have any ideas, or are you just going <laughs> to... I guess you did warn us, and you said you're not the I had ideas on the notes, off and record, you deleted I them. Yeah. But I didn't know that they were supposed to be Kanga-related ideas, or if they were just <laughs> oh, general people who were going to invest in our ideas. But I've always had an idea that has nothing to do with Kanga, to where you type in a movie or a TV show that you're looking for, okay. and then it tells you which streaming platforms that's on. Wow. Dude, that's, that's cool. That's a great uh, idea. really it's, confusing. It's right called now. Google. It doesn't have that. <laughs> <laughs> Try it. It does not have it. IMDb or Amazon Prime. That's, That's like <laughs> it has it on there. He actually, he actually did have in the notes too. Yeah, we got a little bit of time left. He actually did have in the notes too. One thing that uh, we always joke about. It was like uh, it said one streaming platform for all of them. And it's so funny because we joke about that all the time, but we're going to get back to that, and it's just basically going to be cable. <laughs> it's just one streaming platform <laughs> that you pay, a, yeah, <laughs> you pay $100 for it, and it's going to have all of them. Yeah. Yeah. But you have everything. I'm like, wait. Wait, wait. wait. Yeah, we're cable. This is yeah. TV. Yeah. <laughs> we're just going to come full circle on it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, thank you guys for joining us. Oh, that was awesome. awesome, guys. I feel like we could do this for hours. Yeah, that's what's crazy. We have a whole 12-pack right here. So. <laughs> I was going to say, this is After we yeah. turn off the cameras, we're just going to yeah, keep yeah. going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's yeah, what's man. cool about the podcast, right? They can just they can go on forever. But yeah, you got to cut them. That's we'll okay. have we'll have y'all on so. uh, right before the release of the fall one. Yeah, how about that? We'll I love that it. Whenever we come, thanks back for having us on, guys. It's yeah, fun. absolutely. We're gonna have a good time at Yee Day tomorrow. Yes, we are. All right, thank you guys so much for listening. See y'all next week. Eat your veggies.